new Desire from HTC. <laughs> a budget Android phone though, the Desire C does have Android 4.0 but is restricted to a 3.5 inch half VGA display, 4GB of storage space and a single core processor clocked out, wait for it, only 600MHz. Ouch! How the heck can HTC Sense 4 plus ICS fly on that? Build quality is claimed to be decent but I'll reserve judgement, I think. <laughs> I can remember when I first saw footage of the HTC Incredible S. Those standard Android control icons, back, home, menu, etc., actually rotated when you turned the phone into landscape mode to better use the virtual keyboard or to uh, browse the web, for example. So whichever way up you had the phone, the icons were never sideways. Brilliant. So you can imagine my delight when Google unveiled Android 4 and the Galaxy Nexus here. Along with many other upgrades to the platform, I was irresistibly drawn to the virtual control icons. Google and Samsung effectively made the display larger, 4.65 inches then. Astonishing, though of course we've now seen the One X and the Galaxy S3 at 4.8, H, and then use part of the display to show the control icons as needed. I mean, why not? The screen's already capacitive, and this way the icons can be rotated or changed however the software requires. More attractively still, when the need arises and you want the full display area back, for example, watching a, a local video or on YouTube, the control icons disappear automatically. Or, in the case of photos and gallery, they change to a subtle dot here so as not to diminish the beauty of whatever you're viewing, though you can, of course, get the icons back just by tapping. Plus, the icon's brightness is also under full control, since they're just part of the screen. Utter genius, which begs the question of why no other manufacturer has taken this huge and massive design cue for their own Android 4 phones. In fact, I go further and wonder why the likes of the Windows phone manufacturers haven't also seized on this idea. There's the same space-wasting set of three icons at the bottom, and the platform could benefit too with larger screens without increasing the overall form factor. Now, I'm not saying that the Galaxy Nexus as a device is a must-buy for this one feature alone. Remember my full review in Phone Show 160? And I don't think Samsung put that much effort into the components used or into reducing the bezel top and bottom. But it's still mystifyingly a unique feature for this one device. Surely Google must want Android licensees to use this system. Surely it should be part of the standard ice cream sandwich experience by now. And yet it's not. Whether due to manufacturer stubbornness, perhaps unwilling to mess around with the way their UI skin works, or perhaps I'm being too impatient. It's only been six months, after all, since this first appeared. Maybe manufacturers need longer to include this uh, new UI concept in their designs. Your comments welcome. Am I the only one who loves this Galaxy Nexus super feature? This review is utterly a battle between the two sexes. You'll have seen my review of the Nokia Lumia 800, the company's first Windows phone, back in Phone Show 156. Sleek, curved, sexy, and by the standards of 2012, modestly sized. Very much female all round, in my eyes. In part driven by desire to break through in the USA, where bigger is always deemed better, Nokia has now produced a larger version, the Lumia 900, with a 4.3 inch screen and more bells and whistles, e.g. a front-facing camera, RGB tech in the display, a gyroscope and a larger 1830 mAh battery inside. Unfortunately, it was presumably too hard to do the uh, convex Gorilla Glass that merges into the Lumia 800 chassis at the largest size. We ended up with a traditional flat glass display with what feels like a hard metal ridge right around it. Add the extras up, add in the extra size and weight, the harder, brutish front, and what we've got is the Lumia 800's husband. The 900 is undoubtedly male. And this is part of the problem, for me at least. Every time I pick up the 800, I admire its perfectly smooth form. Plastic, it's true, but oh so fondleable, and it's possible to love it. When I pick up the 900, it's a matter of fact, well, just another big, heavy, large green touch slab, and there's no love involved whatsoever. Which is not to say that the Lumia 900 isn't better by every objective metric. In addition to the bigger, better display and battery, there's dual cell HSPA for networks that support it, giving faster, more reliable data, or full on LTE in the USA version, coincidentally the version I've got here, branded by AT&T. Now, I'm one of the few people in the world that like the top of the Nokia Lumia 800 with the magnetic closed pop-up flap 
and with uh, you slide that to one side and up comes the microsim. It's all rather geeky and wonderful and transformer like. On the 900 you've got a much simpler open micro USB port and an iPhone style paperclip released micro sim caddy. Windows Phone here is as wonderfully smooth and as infuriatingly incomplete as usual. There's social network support built into the People Hub, but you still need to install Twitter and Facebook to do anything meaningful. Applications start from scratch every single time, unless you remember the magic, hold down the back icon and scroll to the one you want, Rune, and not a lot can happen in the background here, including receiving calls and chat via Skype. Uh, so if you want to use this, then you have to leave Skype in the foreground all the time with the phone screen kept awake. And don't get me started on the way you can't just load on videos or music as is, but have to go through a PC utility to massage them. Or the brain dead camera with no confirmation that you're actually focused on anything. You press the shutter button half down, it beeps, the rescue flashes exactly the same way, whether you're focused or a million miles from a focus lock, just not good enough. As ever though, there is Nokia's wonderful drive suite. Plus, in addition to the older Lumia software, here, there's Wi-Fi tethering for hooking up your laptop to this phone to share its data. Apparently, this still hasn't yet been released for the old 800. Watch this space on that, though. Unlike some other reviewers, I'm not going to beat the Lumia 900 up about its screen resolution, 480 by 800. It's the same resolution at the same screen size as the classic Samsung Galaxy S2, and that's sold by the bazillion. Maybe most people are like me and don't have 2020 vision to spot the pixels. Who knew? <laughs> The camera is still goodish without ever challenging the iPhone 4S's and the N8's of this world. Here are a few samples of the output. I reckon that's not too bad. This is a video capture test on the Nokia Lumia 900. Continuous autofocus, 720p. Pretty good sound as well in lovely UK sunshine. The loudspeaker on the bottom is uh, not brilliant, but uh, average. Nokia has done better in the past. See what you think. Always room for a bit of clapton on the phone show. <laughs> I don't want to slate the Lumia 900 too much. It's a decent Windows phone that'll do most people very well. It's just not very inspiring. The bezels top and bottom are too large. The smooth convex design of the original N9 has been all but lost. The screen edges here great on my mind and my fingers whenever I swipe in or swipe out. Maybe I'm being picky, but then Nokia are asking a lot of money for this flagship. And I think I should be allowed to leap sideways to a competing product that's cheaper if I'm not entirely entranced. For example, Galaxy Nexus here running Android is almost identical in size to the Lumia 900, but with a 4.65 inch screen and an FC, and it multitasks properly, and you can change the battery when it gets old, and it's £100 cheaper. Or the new Galaxy S3, again the same plan form factor, but a 4.8 inch screen. All the benefits just mentioned and lots more besides for a not too dissimilar price. With the Lumia 800 at least I can say I use it because I'm genuinely fond of it. Quirks and limitations and all. But the Lumia 900 is in a different battle against different competition just mentioned and wades in with full masculine hard-edged brutality but yet is in serious danger of getting beaten up badly. This is the Nokia Lumia 900.